Hi, welcome to Web Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon, and we'd like to thank Backscatter Underwater Photo and Video for sponsoring this episode. Backscatter do a huge range of underwater cameras, accessory housings, accessories, lighting, and everything else. Please check them out at backscatter.com. Um, and I'm joined by our rigger contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Um, Alex and I are having our weekly natter and uh, about underwater photography, which has been wonderful. Um, so, um, we thought we'd talk today about something that's um, just happened in the um, editing game, in the, in the post-processing game. And I thought I'd ask Alex, is it a bird? Is it a plane? What is it? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. It's super <laughs> resolution. <laughs> yeah, so um, super resolution is a new feature that is currently only available in Camera Raw. Yep. Um, which is the plugin that we read raw files from in uh, raw, raw, read raw files into Photoshop through, yep. um, and it's a a a new algorithm um, based um, image interpolation um, sort of plugin in that that allows you to turn a file into a really much much bigger file, and you know we're talking doubling the length, doubling the width of the file, so the picture area obviously goes up four times. So, it, you know, really transformative. So, you know, for example, it would turn something, I guess, around like a 12 megapixel file into, a, I guess, a 50 plus or 48 megapixel file, I guess, accurately. Yep. You know, so it's it's transformative. It's, you know, it's really that same change we've seen over two or three generations of top end cameras or maybe 15 years of top end cameras. Yeah. You're suddenly able to do a click of a button in Photoshop. And yep. while we've always been at up res files in Photoshop, this piece of software has been developed with you know uh, adobe say with m machine learning in that they they threw loads and loads of files at clever computers those computers looked at how best to inter uh, interpolate them and yep. and i think with a lot of edge detection and that sort of thing it's able to you know massively increase file size while at the same time keeping a level of sharpness that creates a very believable result without generating noise. I mean, it's a it's a very clever interpolation um, piece of, of trickery, but this trickery works to a point that I think it, it raises a lot of other questions. Uh, yeah, I think the, the important thing here is that uprising files is not new, is it? You know, there's been, there've no. been options for uprising files for quite a long time, but the, 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 the difference is this one seems to do it so much better than anything that's gone before um, yeah. and, and provides a real potential opportunity to to take relatively low resolution files and make them much high resolution files. And that's that's a, that's a kind of the crucial difference. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. and, you know, Adobe are using words like game changer. Yeah. But uh, what interests me is actually what this means for the landscape of underwater photography. And I don't yep. think it's just about allowing us, oh, yeah, great, I can print my pictures now as big as a house. <laughs> yeah. it, it's yeah. more that I think it can really make us question the gear that we used. And one of the tests that I did is I I went back and looked at an, an old file of mine. I, I dug out a, a photo that I took on my, my Nikon D4, which is a, a 16 megapixel camera. So yep. this photo here of a nudibranch that was awarded in the Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Yep, um, it's cropped. The, the, the awarded picture was cropped about 10%. Yep. But at the time I took this picture, it was the highest res highest magnification underwater photo I'd ever taken. Actually, Adam and I, we both had a prototype of the Nauticam SMC1 yep. on that trip. It wasn't called the Nauticam SMC1. It was just a, a prototype close-up lens at the time. Um, and we were testing it for Nauticam on, on, on the wet pixel Lembe trip back in 2013. Yep. And this is a picture I took with that lens um, and, and it went on to be awarded. And it was fortunate for me. It's a great thing of testing lenses. You can you can bag a competition with it while no one else has got the technology. Um, as, long as, as long as you like nick it from Adam every time something goes. Yeah, I was going to say I never got to use it. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, what's interesting about this this picture is it's a 16 megapixel file, but I clicked super resolution in the image image um in the raw in the raw converter yeah. um when bringing it into photoshop and that blew the file up to a 65 megapixel file so significantly outgunning my my current state-of-the-art nikon d850 um and you know here's a picture of you know this is a hundred percent crop of the rhinophore yeah. and yeah okay it's not absolutely perfectly pin sharp but you're looking 
65 megapixels into an image here. Yeah. It's, and it's, that is a very, very acceptable file. It's a 100% crop of, of a 65 megapixel file. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, you know, for me, that, that raises some interesting questions because the D4 for me is very much a retired camera. Yeah. And if I, you know, was aware that I could get image files like that out of it, it wouldn't be quite so retired. Yeah. And I think that, that you know, it, it really makes me think about, well, what is the optimal camera now for underwater photography? Yeah. Because, you know, I've argued plenty of times about why I shoot a high resolution camera. But, you know, anyone who shoots a high resolution camera realizes that those big files are a pain to live with all the time. Yeah. Uh, we often don't need that resolution. Yeah. Um, and those high resolution cameras are very expensive to buy. Yeah. You know, and I think all those things, that, you know, super resolution says that, well, maybe, you know, a, a camera that produces brilliant image quality in the 12 to 60 megapixel range that can be up res to 50 to 65 megapixels through super resolution is now a very serious weapon in underwater photography yeah so so cameras like the the sony a7s3 which mm. is a you know i think it's a 12 megapixel full frame camera with these big so these big individual photo, site, photo yeah. sites on the sensor and um, specifically designed really for shooting in low light so you know managing to retain dynamic range when you've got a very high isos which it seems to do really well but now you shoot still with that and you can put it out at 48 megapixels you know and in the dark and <laughs> yep. um, with, with minimal noise um, you know, it's a really, really interesting kind of, you know, is that is that the way we should all be shooting? Uh, they, mm. I mean, uh, time will tell on this. I don't think there's an answer. No, to yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah, but, I think we should make that clear. We, we, we don't know the answer, but it, I think this super resolution you know, does raise some really interesting questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and you know. The other advantage of big photo sites is it's not just about noise. It's the more light each pixel on the sensor is collecting, the better signal to noise ratio it has for color for everything yeah dynamic range you know, works you know, yeah. and and you know maybe you know we might find that this is the the beginning of a change in in philosophy in the way we want our cameras and actually we actually find that shooting something you know may you know maybe 20 megapixel or less but with the biggest photo sites possible so big sensors low pixel density get rid of the problems of diffraction yep. get high signal to noise ratio and then let the software do the up for when it's needed. Yeah. Um, and we have relatively for small file sizes on our computers. Yep. You know, there's a lot to be said for that. Um, yeah. I, I th think the other, um, you know, th there's, there's an awful lot as well that we, 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 we've chased this kind of high resolution goat. If that's the right, there's a, there's an African expression that we should always chase the right goat. And maybe, maybe we've been chasing the wrong goat here. Maybe what we should be chasing is, is a really, really good quality, low resolution picture that we then use the software to make, to increase the resolution. Mm. And, and it looks like this may be a tool that allows us to do that. And that's a, you know, that's going to fundamentally change it. One of the other things, of course, that as we increase resolution, and um, we bump into problems with, um, and, and sensor size to be fair, we bump into problems with optical issues around, um, you know, our cameras start having optical flaws, the op optical flaws become more obvious because the resolution's better. You know, it, again, this is time will tell on this, but whether we could now get away with some of those optical flaws because we're shooting with a, a relatively low pixel camera and they don't become evident when we up res it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. And no. It's the same actually with technique as well in that, you know, if you shoot a 12 megapixel full frame camera, it's more forgiving on technique yeah. than a, a 50 megapixel camera. But whether the, the 12 megapixel, you know, you, you get you get you win on both fronts when you up res it as well, whether it it's still as forgiving. I'm not sure. That's but it might well be because, you know, if it's sharp at a pixel level, it's going to stay yeah. sharp. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, and I, you know, so so all those, all those. I mean, I I remember when the D800 came out. You know, there was a lot of talk about how difficult it was to shoot, and I think mm -hmm. that's because people were used to shooting much lower megapixels, much much uh, much less resolution, and, and suddenly you, you everything, yeah, everything. You, when you made a mistake, it was very obvious you made a mistake. Um, whereas they got away with it before. This is, you know, maybe maybe we're back in the same place. So uh, another thing that really interests me about all of this is, you know, anyone who studies the underwater camera market knows that the moment something is a generation or too old, no one wants to touch it and it's worthless. Yeah. But now, you know, what does this mean for say like a, you know, a ten-year-old D three hundred that yeah. is worth 
absolute pocket money because yep. it's 12 megapixel and no one wants to shoot it but it's a very good camera absolutely you know now if you say well actually that's a, a 48 megapixel d300 um yeah. how do you fancy those onions and i think people would be very you know very interested in those things and you know it no one's picked up on this yet and those cameras are worthless but maybe in two or three years time actually those older cameras will increase in value again because people realize if they're looking for a cheap way into underwater photography yeah. that actually buying a really good housing and a really couple of you know super cheap d300 bodies and then just setting super resolution you know when it comes into lightroom as well on all your files yeah you know you can have something that can hold itself head and shoulders alongside the very latest. I, I was amazed. I was looking for a camera to build into a camera trap and I didn't want to spend all the money. So I was looking secondhand and D300s were literally going for a hundred pounds. And it's just an incredible, you know, and, and I'm sure, you know, you pick up housings for relatively little money and, you know, ultimately the lenses are, are what they are. It is a, it's a fascinating option. I, and while you were mentioning it, I was also thinking about, you know, so, so I, well, both of us, I think, certain sense, we've always felt that that if we had to choose, we'd probably choose crop sensor, crop sensor cameras over probably full frame for for a lot of underwater stuff. Um, and maybe this again reinvigorates that same discussion. You know, one of the limitations on on crop sensor has been the issue of 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 resolution. And you know, if that's no longer an issue, should we all be shooting? Crop sensor again. I... Yeah, I think for me, I'd want to process some files up and have a have a proper look at that because I think I think the key to getting the most out of super resolution is to have a really brilliant image quality low resolution file to begin with. Yes, true. Um, and I think therefore the lower resolution full frame cameras, you know, in Nikon speak like a a D4, a D3, yeah. a D700. Yeah. Those cameras I think would really up res well because. You know, you had twelve. You only had twelve megapixels, but you had really great lenses in front of them, yeah. really big photo sites, yeah. and the same with the Sony. You know, you mentioned. all the all the five D, five D Mark II, five D Mark III. You know, those the the Canon five D series would, would be in the same ballpark. Mm. Um, I, th I think there is a bit of bad or something for us to be aware of as underwater or as photographers about this super resolution. Is you it works? It's designed to work best on raw files. But it also works best on on it will work perfectly well on JPEGs because yeah. you can open a JPEG file into Camera Raw um, yeah. from Bridge. If you click on left click on the um, right click on the mouse in Bridge and just go open in Camera Raw, yeah. and then you can apply super resolution to that. And that's something of a concern to all of us because it means that someone could download a a medium resolution version of one of our files from the internet and super resolution it up to a very, very printable size yeah. and potentially have access to, you know, a very usable file from something of ours. You know, I know you can't get everything back, but this is that technology that they've always lied about in films where the, the FBI suddenly, you know, bring out all the detail um, in some, some crappy file, which is obviously completely joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is, this is the technology that, you know, if you have a good starting point, you can maybe end up with something really exceptional, as an endpoint, it's you know so. But and I think it, you have to be careful about what we're putting online. Yeah, it's back. It's back to this. You know, a lot of the time we we've kind of suggested that Instagram is relatively safe as an example as a channel because because mm -hmm. the the files that it's it's using are very small. So people does someone does download it, they can't do much with it. Well, maybe they can. Now. It's quite hard to get pictures off Instagram. You kind of need to screen grab them, and that kind of saves you a bit yeah, as I suppose, well. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. probably it, it makes the point though if you regularly share your pictures without watermarks or at resolutions of more than say a couple of thousand pixels on the longest length yeah i think you're giving someone something that they could really turn into a file that could be printed and used big yeah, yeah, yeah. um and, you know with this technology if they you know unscrupulously of course yeah, but I, I think it's a really exciting new development that you know we've only just seen and we're not really sure but certainly when i've played with it it really delivers you know yeah. if you've got files that are shot low resolution but they're very well shot. Yeah. It really loves those files and it does a great job with them. I think we should probably, probably as a last thing, just bear in mind that it is still a computer algorithm. So um, um, it's relatively slow. So um, at yeah. the moment anyway, 
So I, I don't know. I, I don't have the, the fastest and, and best computer in the world, but it, it takes a while to process a file. So it certainly isn't something that we're going to incorporate into our general workflow. You know, we will be going through doing our calls, picking our selects, and then running it on certain files for specific purposes. It's not. It's not going to become well, at the moment anyway. It's not going to become a standard part of the workflow. Um, no, but I think you could you could also adapt to that in that you would yeah. you know do your picks for the files. You know, get them all optimized in in Lightroom, and then when you're ready to export, yep. you know, you wait to the end of the day, you click export, leave the computer, whirring for an hour or two while you have your dinner, and then there they all are. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're not, not. You know, I, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't start applying super resolution to D850 files and ending up with 200 megapixels <laughs> yeah. for the sake of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think it's going to be one of these tools that you know is very very interesting. Um, and, mm. and where it leads to, but it, it won't be the tool for every occasion. I guess that's, yeah. that's the point I'm making. Mm. Um, yeah, fantastic, Alex. Well, that's a, it's a great discussion. It's an exciting development. Um, so um, I'm sure, well, I don't know. It, that's the problem when we're sharing online. Super resolution is not really an issue, yeah, is it? Yeah, it's not really an um, issue. So, also, so, I'm now wondering whether I should be going back through my favorite, you know, 6 and 12 megapixel files, D100, um, D3, D700 files from my you know, early E2X. days. Of Should I now be reprocessing all of those with super resolution so they're all, you know, hi, you know, higher resolution files? I, I can see. No one's lots, ever complained about them, so I, maybe I, I, I can see. Yeah, I can see lots of. Um, I don't fancy the work. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can see lots of um, time spent in front of your computer, many happy hours in front of um, watching watching processors do their thing. Um, yeah, fantastic. Um, so um, thank you very much, Alex. Um, Great discussion, um, and I'm sure a short subject will be returning to again. I'm, I'm, it's uh, yeah, fantastic. Um, and once again, I'd like to thank Backscatter um, Photo Underworld Photo and Video for sponsoring this episode. We really appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please feel free to add comments um, about your experience of super resolution or, or what we've whatever we've discussed, and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.